So where's the office, back at Division? In the office, baby. Today's a training day, Officer Hoy. Show you around, give you a taste of the business, you know? This is a story about a guy who's twisted. See that hand in hand? So they look like college kids. I'll well, get an education today. Come on, man, we can't do that. Police, put your hands up, put them up! Hell yeah, we can. We the police. We, we have badges, so it's different. That's what I'm talking about. I think he believes his methods are entirely justified. <laughs> Some of them I buy and some of them I don't. Police officer! Jesus, what more you want? I want the justice. Get away from the girl! What's wrong with street justice? Oh, I just let the animals wipe themselves out. God right? will. I don't think I've seen a character like this in a long time. Not like this. I will do anything you want me to do. Will you? We'll see. Back it up, please. Back it up. Going again right away. Stand by. All right, rehearsal's up. High energy, high energy. I think what attracted me to training day was the incredible level of reality that it had. You hear that, homie? You want to go to jail or you want to go home? Huh? It's one day from dawn until midnight. To protect the sheep, you got to catch the wolf. And it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. You understand? Camera reloaded? Well, the interesting thing about the script is it was written by a white kid, David Ayer, who actually grew up in the Rampart area of, of Los Angeles. So everything about the script had the smell of authenticity. I walk a higher path, son. I got the keys to all the doors. I had a curious premise of, uh, you know, in a corrupt world, what happens when one guy says no. You know, the devil doesn't always come to you with horns and a tail. It tends to be a lot more seductive than that. It's interesting because when I read it, I started seeing all these other things. About that time. My mind sort of expanded beyond the car and went into the neighborhoods, the people in the neighborhoods, the people that it affects. What does that do to a community? Good or bad, it affects you one way or the other. So this will be with two cameras, two cameras. Stand right there. Denzel plays this detective who runs an elite squad of undercover narcotics agents in South Central L.A. And it's my first day as, as a part of that. Stand up. I think he's trying to teach him to be a good cop. He has a line. He says, you know, I don't get handicapped by bullshit. Oh, okay. All right, stand up. We do what we got to do the way we got to do it so that we can get things done. Judges have handed out over 15,000 man years of incarceration time based on my investigations, okay? My record speaks for itself. How many felons have you collared? It's a great opportunity for him to work with this highly revered, decorated officer. It's a real opportunity for him to succeed. You got the magic eye, Hoyt. You have the magic eye. You up your street IQ, you're gonna do some damage out here, I guarantee you crime fighter. He wants to be Alonzo when he first meets Alonzo. He wants to make detective, you know? He wants uh, the fame, you know? And um, there's a price to pay. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think Jake had a clue of what he was going to get out of this day. I think he thought he was going to get through the day, ride around in the car, hear a lot of verbiage, you know? And it's not what happens. He started off as a good cop, and you know, there's a line he says, hey, you gotta, you gotta have a little dirt on you for anybody to trust you out of here. I can shoot between them. One cop said it's, it's all about fear and intimidation. They gotta know that you're gonna roll hard on them. Hey, control your suspect. Miss, palms on the glass. You move those hands, I'll slap the taste out of your mouth. You understand me? Put your face right up against the glass. Right there. In his world, it, it's all one big shade of gray and whatever it takes to get the job done is acceptable, is permissible. He's a guy that's probably done some good when he first started and realized that, you know, if you just move this an inch this way, you can actually get a case to stick. And then you start moving it a foot in a yard, and next thing you know, you know, you're on the other side. It's very bold of Denzel to take this role. It is not his usual, clearly heroic role. He always plays somebody within whom the audience has a great deal of empathy. This is a movie that challenges that empathy. What's up, Robbie? Hey, what's going down, brother? It's all good, baby. 
<laughs> this is a role that stretches Denzel Washington in a way that you've never seen him before. A little more. Who are you working for? I look for a departure in, in every role I do. This Alonzo is, uh, he's confused. <laughs> he's twisted. Say that was in a shoe box. But I don't look him as a bad guy, really. He just, uh, he's got problems. Here we go. I think that uh, Denzel Washington is probably the greatest leading man working in films today. I don't think anybody can compete with him as so far as what he's capable of doing. He's a really powerful actor, and I think he's at the top of his game right now. I think the guy's a tremendous. Background action and action! And the amazing thing about Ethan Hawke is he has a vulnerability and a sense of innocence to him, and yet he's not a bashful actor. He's actually able to hold his own and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Denzel, and we found no other actors that were actually able uh, to do that. All right, I'll go back to the valley. I'll cut parking tickets, you know? It can't be like this. It is this way, man. I'm sorry I exposed you to it, but it is. It's ugly, but it's necessary. There's something so innocent about Ethan. He's such a nice person. He's a great guy, you know? But there's something in his eyes that tells me he's seen something in his life. I think Alonzo played you for a fool, Lester. I needed somebody that had some darkness to start. I think that, that made it more interesting. He's a good kid. He's a fine actor. He's intelligent. He's a good human being. He's a real good man. I like him a lot. Why is he talking to him? Right. Ethan and Dizel both wanted me to push them, and they pushed me, for sure. I mean, they challenge me every day because they're very smart, very logical. As soon as I start, I'll open it. Yeah. If you don't have the right answer, they'll challenge you. You know, it's not about rushing to get the shot, it's about getting it right for them. And, uh, you know, that's what works for me, too. Come over. I mean, these, these two guys, man, are, you know, they're pros, period. I couldn't think of anybody else I want to be making this movie with.